happen because the earth rolled and it's wanting to stretch and make that bulge, but at, when it stopped doing its roll, there would have been stresses built up where it wants to rip a little bit further, but it doesn't have the force to. Over the years, all the earthquakes and everything else that's happening apparently caused that ridge to just boom and it ripped. Does this explain why the earthquake caused a 700 mile long uplifting of the ocean floor? In December and 2004, their combined expertise has successfully pieced together the evidence from the bottom of the ocean. They've ruled out giant underwater landslides and in a scientific first, observed uplift on the ocean floor of almost 40 feet. This has changed everybody. I had no idea that we would actually see these really big displacements in the ditch. I thought we might see some faulting and maybe some rubble, but I had no idea that we'd see these big displacements. So it was fabulous. We measured ranges of displacement, sometimes three meters to 12 at one point. And we know that this displacement happened in many locations all along the margin. And it started further south, and then like a zipper, it just opened up all the way up the northern coast. It's a discovery that has changed our understanding of the creation of these giant waves. Anyway, as soon as I saw that, even there's guys here today that on the Sunday when we heard about the tsunami, I told the guys, you know, it's probably uplifted on the ocean floor. Um, we heard that there was a, you know, they were thinking it was a landslide. Nope, it's not going to be a landslide. And they have footage of where it vertically lifted 700 miles along the side. A uh, huge tsunami occurred as a result of it. <laughs> they think it's going to happen off of the west coast. It's not going to because the 90 East Ridge was formed from a different phenomena. And there's one other video that let's watch that there's still liquid magma cut underneath our crust. So when the Denali earthquake happened in Alaska, that we had a micro earthquake in Lake Union. Lake Union shook. And this is footage from November 2002, Como TV. And it was just going, kabam, kabam, kabam. That's one of the eyewitness accounts on Lake Union where houseboats suddenly rocked so violently that water and sewage lines snapped in two. So the whole thing shifted, actually quite a bit of distance. Floating homes were rocking differently than any of these homeowners ever witnessed before. Not this up and down right, you would get if a boat like came this. through here. Um, and so we just didn't, it was very disorienting. And then we realized that it was the water going this way. And seismologists say they could blame the Alaska quake. While it didn't generate a tsunami, energy waves traveling through water could indeed slosh Lake Union. But you do get this very low frequency motion, very slow up and down. And that can cause bodies of water to sort of slosh, a little bit like in a bathtub. Seismologists say there are similar reports from Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans and from nuclear power plants as far away as Minnesota, where tonight they're asking the same questions heard on Lake Union. And then looked out to say, what is happening here? Okay, now the seismologist said that by the earthquake waves um, that it could slosh Lake Union thousands of miles away. Okay, it didn't slosh any of the lakes between uh, Denali and Lake Union, just Lake Union. And just Lake Pontchartrain, where it snapped one inch mooring lines on huge lots in Lake Pontchartrain in Louisiana. It, it changed the intensity and the frequency of geysers in Yellowstone National Park. Now, how could that happen? Again, if there is, if there is still trapped water and liquid magma of the crust coming to a crashing halt, at the end of, at the end of the compre what Dr. Brown calls the compression event, there would have been liquid magma and water trapped underneath our crust. You have this huge Denali earthquake, and you know, what was it, a nine point, whatever, eight, uh, eight, 7.9, eight pointer, 7.9. It's, it's like pressing down your brake pedal on your car, bang, on a hydraulic system. Now you press your brake pedal down, and what happens? The weak spots in your hydraulic system, your slave cylinders on your brakes, they move and they put your brakes on. And so what does that mean? We're living, Lake Union is a bad place to live because there is, there is liquid and they press down in Alaska and the hydraulic effect went underneath the continent and it found a couple of significant weak places, Louisiana and Lake Union, and punched just those. 
And so that means in a more severe earthquake, you would have the trapped pressure underneath the crust. If it breaks the crust above or, or in the area of Lake Union, you would have this tremendous, uh, tremendous disaster uh, that would occur if you could actually break this area, Lake Pontchartrain or Yellowstone, pop the magma underneath Yellowstone. So looking at a map, you see that the Denali earthquake, and, and there's, the scientists investigated the timing of it. How, you know, yachts in New Orleans, Lake Pontchartrain, snapped light. We, we had a guest here that lived in Lake Pontchartrain at the time. He says the lake just looked like a bathtub that you just shook up. It says, one scientist commented, every time we drill a hole, we find the unexpected. That's exciting but disturbing. And a science reporter remarked, the COLA, a deep drilling project, revealed how far from true scientific theory, evolution scientific theory, uh, can roam. And it's, it, they just, they, they're shocked by what they find. It totally supports Dr. Brown's theory of how we got to where we are. Um, Genesis 8 and 4, if you read the rest, I, I'm, we're going to have to just cover these as a review next week of these uh, ch chapters, verses out of Genesis. But let's do one closing verse and going to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 24, and then we'll close. And it says in verse 19, the earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones. The host of the exalted ones is Satan. God will punish Satan and destroy him. But the earth is headed for another cataclysm. There's judgment by fire as we mentioned from the book of Peter. The unleashing of forces still underneath our crust are going to cause the earth to reel again. And the earth is going to wobble a lot more, according to the scriptures, because of these kind of energies that are placed still underneath the crust.